can't we just all get along? But that's not really what they mean. What they really want to say is, can't you just capitulate and shut up? So we hear all this talk about it's time to unite. It's time to be drawn together. And of course, there was a big media flap last week over the fact that Rush Limbaugh, citing some sources and some articles and things that he's read, that there are groups, peoples, talking about maybe it's time for secession. And right away, the mainstream lying legacy corporate corrupt media, they pounced. And they immediately accused Rush Limbaugh of encouraging secession. And then, of course, you had political pundits and the so-called expert class coming forward and saying, aha, this is treason. This is awful. And he's, he's encouraging open rebellion. First of all, he was talking about reports that are out there that there are groups talking about secession. And let's not forget that under the Trump administration, there were Democrat governors openly talking secession. Uh, California, over the whole sanctuary state status, and Newsom made it clear that, you know, secession is still a viable option. But of course, there was no media blowback over that. That was perfectly understandable. Who wants to be united under, quote, the orange man? But see, now, now this idea that we need to just come together, as I said in a previous monologue, you need to pay careful attention to what the left says and understand, though they may use terminology that you understand and even agree with, remember, Democrats are phenomenal at changing the meaning. It's the same thing that some of us deal with in the theological world. You know, the Bible says what it says. So liberal theologians, they can't actually change the wording of the Bible, although many of them try. Uh, so what they do is they start redefining what those words and those phrases mean. And the same thing happens among liberals in politics. See, when you come down to substance, the, the entire liberal argument falls apart because... The facts are on our side. So what they have to start doing is rewriting history and changing the definition of facts and words and what they mean. So when they say unite, what they're really saying is, here's how we can all get along. If you just fall in line and know your place. That's what coming together in the liberal world means. This is why you have YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and other social media platforms that are now basically, that they're involved in just outright censorship and erasing. You know, there was a time that we could have heated debate and contests in our country, and even liberals and conservatives would get to a point where they would say, we will agree to disagree. Now, that didn't mean that we liked the liberals any more than they liked us, but we could kind of coexist. And the liberals have now decided, and the progressive left has now decided, there will be no more coexistence. You will either come along to their way of thinking, or you're just going to be eradicated, erased, re-educated, muzzled, silenced. You will be outed. And when we out you, that's it. We will deplatform you. We will absolutely ostracize you and cut you off, and that will be the end of you. Discredit you, whatever we have to do, marginalize you, you're done. You will not only embrace abortion and alternative lifestyles, but you will embrace as normal that someone can be born a woman and at the age of 40 decide, no, I'm a man. Well, I feel that you and I have established enough of a relationship in my daily rants here, and I have been doing this long enough now, and I think I have built up enough of a base of loyalty here that um, you get me, you understand me. And, and I think it's finally time that I, I confess something to you that I've been holding back on a little bit. I, too, at one time, 
was a man trapped in a woman's body. And then nine months after that fact, my mother gave birth to me. Bazing. But see, that's not considered normal anymore. See, we're having, and Scripture talks about this, that in the last days, that which is good will be called evil, and that which is evil will be called good. And so what we have happening now is the, 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 the polar opposite of everything that is, quote, normal. See, liberals and the progressive left, they hate real normal. The traditional nuclear family. A mom, a dad, raising kids, married. Oh, no, no, can't have that. So every alternative form of lifestyle has to be embraced as, quote, the new normal. And where have we heard that phrase, new normal? Like with all of the social norms we're going through right now as a result of a fake pandemic. If you think that this so-called coronavirus is simply about health and even just mandating a vaccine, you're so wrong. They are using this pandemic, not just here, but around the world, that the, that the oligarchs, the ruling class, they have seized on this, and one might even say manipulated and created this. They have seized on this as a way to bring all kinds of change, and not just so-called change in our behavior when it comes to health. No, no, nay, nay social change and socialism change. Let me say that again. Social change and socialism change. In the name of a pandemic, we are embracing this idea of a new normal. It's no longer normal to shake hands. We'll just wave or elbow bump. That's stupid. Uh, uh, wearing a mask and social distancing. And again, Fauci's out there and he's making it abundantly clear that even after the herd is vaccinated, you got to keep that mask on because who knows what other evils are lurking in the air out there, ready to strike, ready to kill you. You know, uh, every day they tout the fact the numbers are going up, the numbers are going up, the numbers are going up. I, I live under a delusional rhino governor named Mike. You are here. He comes out every day and he just kind of whines. Now Ohioans, you're not doing enough to stop the mitigation and the spread of coronavirus. Shut up. Honestly, in the name of heaven and all that's decent, would you just go away? But of course, what he wants to talk about every day is we have these rising numbers and we have the red zone and the pink zone and the blue zone and the purple zone. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm zoned out. I have just completely zoned out of these people. You know, you got... Uh, Czar Cuomo over there in New York, who's put the state through yet another lockdown. They're shutting down all indoor dining in the city, and you know the rest of the state will follow on Monday, despite the fact that I lived in upstate New York uh, for 30 years of my life, and I can tell you there is not a uh, this, the same type of populace upstate as you have concentrated in New York City. So there's there's no reason for upstate to have to suffer. But then again, upstate New York is kind of like the unwanted stepchild. Uh, they have suffered forever. Apparently, the only reason they exist is to be the worker bees, to be taxed to death so that all their revenue can be funneled to support bankrupt New York City. Oh, did I really just go there? Yeah, I did. That said, um, the numbers are going up. But even the CDC has had to kind of concede, although they don't, they, they don't really want to get into it, They've had to kind of concede that 95 to 97% of the positive results from all of this screening that we're doing are false positives. False positives. Bum, ba -dum, bum. Uh, but yet, every time somebody, quote-unquote, tests positive, even if they are not clinically actually infected, it is reported as yet another case. So the numbers go up. Hospitalizations are only going up because hospitals, like every other business in this country, took a huge hit during the countrywide shutdown. So hospitals have begun basically uh, uh, admitting anyone for anything. And then we call it COVID. So they're, you know, even DeWiner lying. I mean, literally lying through his teeth a week ago about we were having to use 
tractor trailers as mobile morgues. The, 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 the lying is unconscionable right now. And this is all being designed to line you up, put that mask on, because all they're using the mask for, it's not about spreading, stopping the spread. If the mask actually stopped the spread, if that was actually protecting you from a virus floating in the air, then every time you take it off, you would be made to throw it away in a biohazard receptacle. And you'd have to put a fresh one on out of a sterile pack because, after all, the virus is just floating around out there. Is that what they're requiring us to do? No. They could care less if the mask you put over your face you have had in your back pocket and been farting on for a month. They don't care. It's not about your health. It's not about your safety. You wear the mask for two reasons. Number one, they want you looking at each other and being afraid. We have a virus. We have a virus. We have a virus. I better get that vaccine. I better get it. I better get it. The other reason they do it, they want to see who is compliant and who are the people that are going to cause trouble for them. Th that's what this is right now. And they're using all of this to institute all kinds of endless change and they're doing it in the name of your health and your safety and this is what they want you to unite and if you don't unite you're going to be marked deplatformed and life will become very miserable for you and of course talking about rush limbaugh he's he's spreading hate of bib secession well who is it over the summer that actually marched on our cities and tried to burn them to the ground was that the right or the left and make no mistake about it, I got news for you anarchists on the left, Antifa, BLM, etc. If you think the Joe Biden administration is going to let you just continue to reign anarchy to get your way, you are sorely mistaken. Yeah, I know, right now, they, they, they're high-fiving you, they're saying they stand with you, and they're even pushing this whole idea of defund the police. Understand that is all being done on purpose and one day some of you people that are in the streets protesting you will wake up and be you and realize how you were used and duped and it'll be too late for you let me give you a little perspective and a history lesson on this every socialist regime every oppressive regime comes to power during a time of civil unrest when you are proposing all types of radical change when it comes to free this, free that, and a socialist type of governance onto a people who are used to freedom, liberty, capitalism. Well, just trying to go out there like a Bernie Sanders and campaign on it, oh, it's not going to get you anywhere because uh, people uh, they don't want to do that. So what you do, you create all types of just, it's nothing but chaos and unrest and people don't feel safe. And eventually, you go with the person that you believe can restore peace. And at that moment in time, you don't even care what their so-called political ideology is. You don't care what their political philosophy is. Can you maintain law and order so I can get back to being outside and not feeling like if I leave my house for 15 minutes, some mob is going to just wander by and burn it to the ground? So... What happens then, once that, 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 that individual, those group of individuals have taken control of the country with their socialist agenda, the very people that they used in the streets to create the unrest, they will crush. Adolf Hitler used a group of people called the Brown Shirts to create civil unrest in the streets of Germany until eventually Hitler was placed in power. And he was placed in power by the uh, Weimar Republic under the guise of, well, if we throw the people a bone here, things will calm down. And right away, the same people who are creating the riots in the streets, the brown shirts, immediately calmed down, quieted down, because their guy Hitler was there. But Hitler was smart enough to know that the people within the brown shirts if they didn't like what Hitler did, they could become a challenge to him. So once Hitler had his Gestapo and SS in place, we have the night in history known as the Night of the Long Knives, where Hitler either rounded up and arrested or killed, or both, members of the brown shirts. 
done with them. So hey, BLM, Antifa, go ahead, give yourself a thumbs up and a high five that you help Biden and Kamala. And when the day comes that you are no longer needed for their cause, even though they're talking about defunding police, and, and yeah, Team Biden wants that. But here's what they'll do. They understand that there has to be law and order in the streets for their own preservation. So Team Biden will nationalize the police. Can you imagine if Donald Trump had tried that? They will nationalize the police. Oh, and the police will be given military-grade weaponry. And they will be sent into the streets to clear them and maintain order. That's what's coming. And that's what they're asking you to stop questioning. This is why every video now comes with warnings and they're going to pull them down off social media. If you are not reading from the pro script... And I know there are other social media platforms popping up. There's Rumble. There's Parler. I, I was on another media platform called uh, BitTube TV. And to be quite honest, I was getting three times the viewership there that I do on YouTube. And then one day, I went to log in, and all of a sudden, all of my antivirus and spyware software went berserk, and Google pops up this warning that this, this is a dangerous site. Now, I am sure that this site was run offshore. No, not China. I believe it was based out of Britain, the United Kingdom. And now what... Isn't it amazing how... All social media platforms that are approved funnel through Google, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. What they will do moving forward, be careful, Parler, be careful, Rumble. They'll pull your license. When people try to log into their Parler account or try to log in over at Rumble, all of a sudden, they will start getting warnings that this website is not safe and it is infected and etc., etc., etc. This is what's coming. And they're telling you, you will unite. You will embrace the abnormal as normal. This is what's coming. And this is why it is now more apparent than, than ever that we need to sound the alarm and speak up and call this out. And we understand how we would like to see things go regarding the courts. But again, it's all dependent on, will the courts, looking into the Texas lawsuit, will they actually do the right thing, the constitutional thing, or are they going to do the agenda thing? Because if you don't realize there is a totalitarian agenda behind even the using of this pandemic, then I have been wasting my breath. I, I, I don't know any more than I can say or what is being said by others. And eventually, even us questioning the vaccine will be pulled. How dare you? Doesn't matter that 99.8% of the people who get coronavirus will live. You're going to be vaccinated anyway. It doesn't matter that 95 to 97% of the people who test positive for coronavirus, it's a false negative. They have no symptoms. Doesn't matter. The numbers are going up. You will mask up. You will be inoculated. And then we have other things that you're going to do. This is the new normal that they're telling us to unite. I got a feeling that uh, the very civil war that they keep saying we're trying to start, that their people were starting, and have still got going in Portland. But just remember, just remember, you are warned.